So let's have a look to the UI functionality. So we have, for example, these buttons. And the behavior is here in this panel script. And what it does basically is uh, look for the children here in this vertical box. And if the children is a button, split the name and get the second part, which would be presets or body or head, and connect it to this function. That is going to search with this name. If it's a vertical box container and the name is the same, you are going to hide or collapse. Quite simple. So for the preset buttons, they are just simple buttons that are contained here in a grid container. So what we do for initializing that is we just uh, look for all the presets here in the grid container. Um, we get the, the texture that we generate here in the snapshot when we save a preset. So it's stored in, in the folder and we just look for that preset and load it as a texture normal. It's a texture button by the way. Sliders are stored in a, in a separate uh, scene and they have its own behavior. So for example here each slider is connected to this function of the owner, which is in this case is the UI. And this function receives the value. The type, for example, is the is the first character. So some of, some of the sliders uh, share the same functionality. So just in case I made this in this way. So if it's an M, if we match the type and it's an M, we are going to get this value and send it to the character. We are feeding the character this time. So we are saying, hey, make this with this value. So in this case, we are calling to this function that takes the value, loops in all the meshes, and sets the blend shapes. Also, it tweaks the materials, for example, and removes the normal, the normal map for not having always muscles, for example. All the sliders are initialized here in the ready function. We call the init values function. And this is pretty much hard coded because its slider needs its own properties. Um, for example, we call this init slider function. We pass the slider itself, the size, the step, which is a float, and the init value, the first value that it's going to have. So when we initialize this, sliders when we run this is always going to have the value we, we want and for example you have these steps one by one but for example here you don't you don't need those steps and those values this is from 0 to 1 and this is from 0 to 6 that's an example so this is a specific case that we had to initialize by hand because the, this parameter needs like negative values and it doesn't start by zero like the others. So we initialize this by hand and then if not, we just get these parameters and we initialize it. So color presets are just buttons. Um, for each color, I stored here in a dictionary, for example, the skin tones. I got the tone 1, tone 2, it has to have the same name of the buttons and I did some different colors here and what it does when we initialize uh, these presets, these color presets, we make a new style here, uh, we get the color on the, on the hair tones and we assign that color, it's quite easy to initialize and if it's not random it, uh, it's going to call this function when clicked and if not this other function of random hair color clicked. So the preset button clicked are going to send this button name and the value which is going to be a string that is stored here. So for example this tone will send this color with this parameter. So yeah, if we go here for example the skin 
is going to get this color and call the character to say to say hey set this skin color and then it sends the color so here's it set 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 skin color so this function the character receives the color we're going to convert the color from json because we're going to need this function to parse the data and yeah we make a zoom of rgb values which means if it's lighter it's going to have a higher value that is that if it's uh, darker what i mean is that we are getting this result value which is from 0 to 3 that would be the the max value of the color and we will repeat to these values just to control the roughness what i mean is that uh, if you for example don't do that uh, let me check uh, look how the roughness reacts looks like so shiny so you have to tweak that to lower the roughness there's something more decent still weird but it's better So finally we have these color selectors that works in a way like the sliders and in the way that I mean that they connect itself with the owners by sending signals when they are changed. Uh, so in this case we are we are sending the signal with these parameters that we get from splitting the name which in this case for example would be skin tone body. Skin tone would be the parameter, body would be the material. So, uh, send the parameter, and if material is body, we say, hey, set skin color. But if, for example, it's an eye color, we want to change this. It's going to get the material because it's unique already. It's going to send the parameter, the material, and this color. So, the character receives that, and depending on the part, it gets the eye material that we stored previously in a reference and okay it gets the material and sets this parameter that's it if you want to get rid of this ugly stuff that looks weird in a video game honestly uh, you always can navigate to the remote panel navigate to this color picker and see which is children of what or which is its thing so just you just go here and hide it this by the way is for placing the color selector itself it's going to take the rec size of the panel in the x axis and the global mouse with an offset for the y axis so in this way it's going to be always placed near the mouse and at the right side of the panel yeah, and everything works more or less in the same way, following the same guide, same system. So I think it's easy to understand what's happening with each parameter. You're sending always information to the same functions to the character, so I hope it's clear. If not, leave me a comment and I will help you.